I'm in the new studio and here we go. We're going live with the 2021 Twisty Awards. It's going to be amazing. This Week in Startups is brought to you by Calm for Business can help your employees be their best selves at work. HR and benefit leaders can get a free year of Calm for Business at calm.com slash twist. That's C-A-L-M dot com slash twist. NordVPN is improving VPN services globally. Access content from over 59 different countries and stay safe online. Go to nordvpn.com slash twist or use code twist at checkout to get 73% off a two-year plan plus an extra bonus gift. And eight sleep. Good sleep is the ultimate game changer. Now you can add the Pod Pro cover to any mattress. Go to 8sleep.com slash twist to check out the Pod Pro cover and get a special holiday offer. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to This Week in Startups 2021 Twisty Awards. And now give a warm welcome to your host, Jason Calacanis. Oh, everybody, welcome, welcome, everybody, to, yes, please, sit down, everybody, it's, yeah, you're, it's too much, it's too much, thank you, thank you, everybody, it's been an amazing year on the Twi on This Week in Startups, and we are so, so excited to bring you uh, the funniest, best, most insightful moments from the podcast this year, our 11th year as a podcast, my God, we started before the iPhone. We were doing this when podcasts were listened to on an ancient device, uh, which you might find in a landfill called an iPod. Yes, that's how old this podcast is and how old I am. I can even tell you why they're called podcasts. And most of you literally don't know why they're called podcasts. It's because they used to be synced to iPods, which was a device that only did music. And it was, yeah, it was crazy. All right, everybody. We have uh, a number of great awards. We might as well get right to it. The most surprising, awesome guest is our first award. This is for people who, you know, bit of a wild card, didn't expect they were going to be awesome. And here are the nominees. Taylor Lorenz from the New York Times on episode 1217, Paul Judge, Angel, season five, episode nine, and Splice CEO, uh, Steve Bartosi, uh, Splice founder on episode 1265. It's a cloud-based music creation collaboration platform. Let's roll a clip of the highlights from these great moments. All right, everybody. Next up on the program is Taylor Lorenz. Um, I guess my feeling with going independent is covering the creator economy and, and having a lot of friends who are YouTubers, you know, independent media people. Like, it's so much work. It's so much work. It's so much work. And my job now, it's work, but it's not like running your own business work, you know? It's not like staring at the ceiling at 3 a.m. work, wondering if you're going to make payroll. <laughs> you have the security. I mean, yeah. you have the security. And I, I don't know if I'm entrepreneurial enough, entrepreneurial enough. Today on the program, Steve Martosi. I say my biggest competition is people giving up on themselves. Because there's so many people who want to create. It's like this inert human desire to be creative. And all these kids want to be, you know, standout content creators now. So like, I'm not worried about anyone else in my space. I'm worried about can I keep people engaged? Can I keep you a lifelong musician? Can I deliver you great value and product? My friend, Paul Judge. You know, it's filled a lot of things that we're cheering on right now. Like we invest in a company called Praxis that does diversity training to help people with unconscious bias, right? Yep. It's caused people to like double down on, you know, like I started a, a, a cannabis, medical cannabis company two years ago because it's about, hey, there's inequality in this industry. We can use our business skills to go solve that inequality and so it's, it's, it's fueled the passion of, I think, this current generation to just go harder. And so yeah. to, to your point, I think ultimately what will happen is, yeah, in this lifetime, we'll get closer uh, to equality. Along the way, we'll, we'll see a lot of uh, kind of good impact around education and kind of feeding the, the, the folks that, that are in need and, 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 and so forth. All right. And the winner of most surprisingly awesome guest of the year for the Twisties 2021. Let me rip open the envelope, everybody. Okay, the winner is Splice CEO Steve Martosi. Yes, submitted by one of our Nodi Gang members. Congratulations to Steve. Okay, next up, everybody loves this award. Sometimes they get into a vibe with a guest and we just start 
you know, just sharing the ball back and forth. The volleys get going, and that's best chemistry of the year. The nominees are Redfin CEO Glenn Kelman, episode 1261, Angel Investor and Friend of Mine for Multiple Decades, Joanne Wilson on Angel, season five, episode 10, and Bradley Tusk. Let's check out some clips of those candidates and those outstanding performances for best chemistry. This is an interview <laughs> with my friend Glenn who runs Redfin. Good to well, see you, Jason. Kind of Good to see you. It's going to be a kind of different interview. We're starting from wherever, catching up with each other. I'm in Florence. He's in, you want to just where you are? It's I'm in Seattle. Seattle. He's in Seattle. And uh, we've been friends for over a decade, I guess. We met at Sequoia back in the day, I guess. And you were not only that. Yeah. I was at war. I just want all of your investors to know that I got into a funk with my investors. Uh, and I talked to you um, because I thought about quitting or I didn't know what to do. And I was That's being totally story. dysfunctional. And you told me just to grow up and to grow a yeah. pair, which I did. Yeah. And it was some of the best advice I've ever gotten. So whenever you ask me to oh. be on this podcast, of course, I have to say yes. And it's also just a lot of fun. So welcome to the podcast, the Gotham gal herself. Joanne Wilson. How are you doing, sis? Good. How are you? <laughs> My big sister here. There were all these people buying real estate there as like some store of value and never living there, right? Well, they have to change the tax system, right? These people that go off to Florida for 180 days, f you. Okay. Yeah. If you live in Florida for 180 days or you live in New York for 70 days, you pay 70 days worth of taxes. You get to take oh. the subway, you get to drive on the streets, you get to enjoy New York and you own a goddamn apartment. It's just bullshit. I mean, I didn't live, wow. we didn't live in New York for 180 days this year, but you can be damn sure I paid our, we paid our taxes. All right, listen, an hour with Bradley Tusk. You and I are going to become fast friends. I'm booking you for six months from now to come back on the program. Um, can't wait to do it. All right. And then I'm going to be in New York. Uh, maybe we'll catch a Knicks game. Maybe you take me to some great sushi place. Let's you go. And I want to know about this new company you got. Yep. We got we got to start vibing now because this is like a moment here. We got to I think we got a, a, a bromance going. We got the shared history with Uber. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be great. Producers, six months from today, I want Bradley back on the program. All I'm right, committing right now to doing. Okay. So you got well, we're gonna have, I think there's going to be a lot for us to, to check back up on. You, well, yeah, this does, it always evolves and changes. And look, there's all kinds of stuff we haven't talked about yet, like drones, mm -hmm. AI, machine learning, autonomous cars, autonomous trucks, flying cars, all this stuff. Three great, uh, you know, two great friends and then one new one. How do you choose here? Well, this was submitted by Goldbrick on YouTube and the winner of Best Chemistry, drum roll, please. Let me get the envelope. Hold on. I got it right here on my desk. Let me rip up with this envelope. I'm struggling with this one. It's particularly bad. Ah, there it is. Hold on. The winner is, the winner is Bradley Tusk. Wow. Amazing. Congratulations to Bradley Tusk for best chemistry of the year. It's the end of the year and lots of us are super stressed out with deadlines and planning for 2022. And business leaders know that healthy and happy employees create successful companies, no matter what the industry. So Calm for Business can help your employees to be their best selves at work. And there is no better time to start fresh than in the new year. Calm wants to help you kickstart your mental well-being initiatives like empowering employees to stress less and to get them to rest better and to build mental resilience. Calm has a library of specifically designed content that includes lo-fi music playlists, quick breathing breaks, guided meditations, and hundreds of soothing sleep stories. So you can glide right into that nice deep sleep and the next day, you're gonna be crisp, you're gonna make great decisions, you're gonna be creative, and you're gonna be more fun to work with. They even have programs tailored for mental health and productivity, like their Mindfulness at Work series. Millions of employees at over 600 companies like Lincoln and Universal Studios are now using Calm for Business and they're doing it for a reason. Calm for Business is offering a free, I kid you not, one year subscription for HR and benefit leaders at calm.com slash twist. A free year of Calm for HR and benefit leaders so you can experience what Calm can do for your company. So there's no risk. Go ahead and try it out. Play with it for a year. I'm sure after just a couple of days or weeks, you're going to want everybody in the company to experience the magic of Calm. Get started today at calm.com slash twist. Once again, calm.com slash twist. Okay, moving on. Best food talk. Even though the show is about business, you know I love food. And you know, like when you're watching these clips of me, 
maybe I look like I'm 25 pounds heavier. I am 25 pounds heavier in these. I'm uh, 173 today on the scale. I was 198 in many of these clips, which is my peak weight, I think, of uh, 2021. So very proud of myself for getting it together. Okay. I love talking about food. Everybody knows that. It comes up. This year, I had two amazing, incredible guests from the food world. First up, Gold Belly, CEO Joe Ariel, amazing guest. And then Talk and Alinea founder, Nick Kokonis. He was a great guest as well. Let's roll the highlights. These guys are neck and neck as my two bestie foodie buddies. Yeah. Alinea, is yeah, yeah. A, I've never been, but is a three Michelin star restaurant and was named the best restaurant uh, in the United States. So welcome to the program, Nick. Talk to me about the uh, signature dessert you guys created, the painted table that is often now uh, copied. I think that it's copied and mocked and it's on, it was on the front page of Reddit last week. I was watching a Picasso documentary from mm. the twenties or thirties where they had mounted a camera behind some plexiglass and watched him, watched him paint. It is bananas interesting how he creates layers of of paint and stories under the final image that you don't even see like one of the great things about a great hospitality experience or any experience is that it's new and the older you get the harder it is to have a new experience that is the childlike innocence that we all lose as we get older so we decided we wanted to make people feel childlike and the first thought that i had was i was once in a museum where everything was scaled to what it'd be like if you were five years old so the chairs were huge the table was huge the color oh, was huge yeah. so i was like we're gonna make a table plate <laughs> and it's gonna be like the size of the table and it's gonna be a plate and at the same time it'll be a new experience because everyone loves to paint when they're a kid yeah and you'll have this giant thing so that was the start of the conversation all right, next up on the program is the founder of a website I am absolutely obsessed with. That website is for foodies, goldbelly.com. The founder is Joe Ariel. Have you heard of Francis Melman, the Argentinian chef? He's famous for the, the, the giant like uh, asados and the hanging meats and vegetables. Oh, wait, he's the guy in Miami at that new hotel, the, um, the Faena. The Faena. I had dinner at the Faena with the owner of the Faena and that chef did that for us. On a giant thing, we had like 15 people, a couple of my friends, and it was outrageous. Outrageous. I mean, it, it's, it's like the best meat, best grilled meat that you could like ever have. Uh, so we actually shipped Francis Melman. Wow. Um, and we've partnered up with him. And it's, it's this unbelievable like grill kit that you ask like what some of my favorites are. It's something that I've ordered like two or three times this summer. It's this like full asado kit where you get the most amazing meats and side dishes and you can basically have this event for friends or family that come over using your own grill based on his recipes all right listen this is a tough one they're neck and neck i mean i could roll with either of these gentlemen both huge foodies uh both with so much to add to the world of foodies so much passion uh for food but the winner is drum roll please the winner is okay nick kokanis congratulations Submitted by Nodi Gang member Gordon Gill. Congratulations on that. And uh, I got that envelope open real easy. That one was particularly easy. And on to the news topic of the year. There were no, absolutely no competition here. It was one of one. The winner was Tether and other alleged potential frauds we covered so often. But Tether was the one that just kept coming up and giving us more and more to talk about. So here is a highlight of all the amazing fraud coverage we did in 2021. It's in our it's like our in memoriam. There is um, something that everybody in the cryptocurrency community has been talking about for many years. And it seems to be bubbling up again. And sometimes when I feel this, I decide to go all in on it. So I've watched different scams in our industry, and I've seen them unfold. And I'm starting to get that spidey sense with Tether. Back to our never-ending obsession with fraud, or I should say mine. I am obsessed with business frauds. Theranos, uh, Madoff, perhaps Nikola, uh, perhaps Tether. Well, there's a company called Lordstown Motors that might be a fraud, um, and it could be going to zero. I, I, I'm using, I know how to use the words now. I know how to frame this without getting myself in trouble. 
Uh, but just this morning, CNBC has reported that Lordstown Motors, another pre-revenue EV SPAC, okay, so it's pre-revenue, that's one thing. It's in a really hard space, electric vehicles, and it's a SPAC, uh, they confirmed they're being investigated by the DOJ for its reporting of pre-orders. Uh-oh. Okay, we've got a Nicola fraud update. As alleged, Trevor Milton brazenly and repeatedly used social media and appearances and interviews on television, podcasts, hmm, and in print to make false and misleading claims about the status of Nicola's trucks and technology. They definitely watched our podcast. The one time I'll take a shout out from the Department of Justice and be really thrilled about it. All right, there you go, folks. Uh, so many frauds. I forgot about Lordstown and all of this crazy stuff. Remember, shout out to all the frauds. Uh, we're going to miss you when you're in jail. We're going to miss you when you pay your fines. Just so many frauds and alleged frauds, App Annie, Headspin, that maybe alleged ones, Ginkgo, Zymergen, maybe incompetence, maybe fraud. Who knows where the line is, but we will keep covering all the shenanigans into 2022. And for me, this is like our in memoriam. Rest in peace uh, to the guilty and to the innocent. We don't believe you. <laughs> I still think you're guilty. <laughs> so too many shenanigans, too many red flags this year. The market's definitely at a peak. All right. Jason's inside of the year. And again, I don't bring these up, but the fans and the producers find these great moments. They tell me that the nominations for my best inside of 2021 are my take on Rivian's market cap surpassing 100 billion. Well, they delivered even one car. That was episode 1324. My comparison of YouTube versus Netflix in terms of revenue growth and users from episode 1255. And my take on how the US should change their immigration policy in episode 1323. These are my hot takes, my insights. Uh, and uh, let's play this two minute and 50 second clip. Rivian should be worth, if I uh, gave them just an incredible amount of credit, if you gave Rivian a uh, million dollars, in valuation for every truck they'd sold, that would be 50 billion. That would be kind of crazy because you don't make a million dollars off each one. So if you gave them a hundred thousand in value, it would be worth five billion. I think five billion would be a fine valuation for Rivian right now. Uh, but obviously they've raised all this money, so they have to have a valuation over 17 billion because that's how much cash they have. So maybe double that, 40 billion. Even there, it doesn't make much sense. I think it's a terrible stock to own right now. And YouTube grew revenue almost 100% year over year, 80% year over year growth is just extraordinary for a large business. Let's break down how YouTube compares to Netflix, two seemingly very different businesses, but who line up kind of interestingly. Their ad revenue was 7 billion, up 83% year over year. The 7 billion is pretty close to Netflix's Q2 revenue, which was 7.3 billion. I think it's great for us to look uh, at these two businesses. Netflix has 10 times less users than YouTube. They only have 210 million subscribers compared to YouTube's 2 billion plus users who use the service every month. So one is 10% of the size of the other. They both have the same revenue and the revenue comes from different places. So if, if you look at where the content comes from, what, what is the product? Well, Netflix, Netflix spends billions on premium content every year. We know that YouTube has billions of users, obviously, and it's generally user generated content or professional generated content, but it's an open platform. YouTube is not a gatekeeper. Anybody can upload anything. I'd actually give the edge to YouTube here because I don't think they have a contemporary. There is no business out there that can reach as many people as quickly with video than YouTube. Maybe it's time for us to talk about a point based system at the border. What does it mean? It means you just take the emotion and the polarization out of immigration. Immigration shouldn't be all or nothing. There's a lot of nuance here. Everybody coming into the country uh, provides some amount of value. Why don't we tie the number of jobs that are available to the number of people that we let in? So in other words, you take the last five years, you have a rolling average of the last 200 weeks, 250 weeks of unemployment data, you look at it and say what jobs are open? Okay, teachers, doctors, lawyers, construction. Okay, great. Let's take out construction. Great. Where can we get incredibly trained construction people? Great. If you're applying, and you say I've got 12 years experience in construction, I'm a plumber, I'm a, an electrician. Great. We need more of those. Looking back at these four years, we need, uh, we will give a preference to what we actually need in the country. Is that too cutthroat? Or is that logical? Mm. It's a tough one even for me. I, I like all of my takes. You'll be surprised to learn 
And I still stand by those takes. I like each of those takes. So let's uh, go to the winner. Drum roll, please. I know everybody's very excited. This is a very... Oh, let me get this envelope open here. This is a very important category. But I'm struggling with the envelope so much. It's so hard. Uh, uh, wait. Hope I don't make a mistake. The winner is Rivian's insanely juiced up valuation. Shortly after going public, they were the second most valuable car company in the world. I kid you not. And they peaked at a $150 billion valuation with no cars on the road. What is happening, folks? The market cap, of course, after I told you this was ridiculous, uh, has been cut in half to $76 billion. When things are this frothy, eventually the air gets let out. And I would say, we are only, you know, a half or a quarter of the way there. The company's market cap is now $76 billion. In the first earnings report, they reported they have only produced 652 vehicles and delivered 386 of them. And um, I think a lot of those went to employees. Uh, never a good sign. They also reported they will fall short of their goal to build 1,200 cars by the end of 2021. They also have 71,000 refundable deposits. At an $80 billion market cap, Rivian is getting $1.1 million of credit for each of their 71,000 deposits. In other words, you buy a car for whatever it is, 50 to 100 grand. I think they're more like 100 grand. They're getting credit for 11 times that, and they're probably not even close to profitable on each car. In other words, it makes no sense. I value the company at $25 billion, maybe $16, $17 billion in cash, maybe give them $5 billion for their innovations and team and potential. Put it as a $25 billion company. So I think it could lose two thirds of its value from here. Uh, but you never know. There could be stonks and people pumping this up, or uh, people could be incredibly optimistic. But man, I really like for people to have their valuation of their company in some way correlated with the reality of their business. Call me old school, but I'll, I'll give you a lot of credit for potential. But let's not have these things disconnect from reality, folks. Do you want to increase your online security? Don't we all? If so, you need to hear about NordVPN. NordVPN offers a VPN, that's a virtual private network, with benefits such as helping customers stay safe online and accessing content from over 59 different countries by changing your virtual location with just one click. So if you're outside the U.S., you still have access to all the U.S. streaming services and will never miss your favorite show again. And it keeps you safe while you're using public Wi-Fi, which can be a goldmine for hackers. I have to be super careful because, listen, I'm a target. And I always use NordVPN. It's so great. And there's been times I've been on the road and I want to watch something. I was with my uh, family. We we're in Italy. They want to watch something on Disney. Oh, no bueno. Doesn't work. Had to use my NordVPN and I'm back in the game and we're watching The Mandalorian and life was great. So go to nordvpn.com slash twist or use code twist at checkout to get, I kid you not, 73% off a two-year plan plus a special bonus gift. For US customers, NordVPN will cost you one cup of coffee per month, about three bucks. That is an incredible deal. It's a great gift idea for the new year. Keep yourself safe keep your privacy, and be able to access anything you want from around the world. Claim this offer fast, as it's a limited time only offer. NordVPN.com slash twist. Uh, best live moment. We started doing live moments, as you know. Um, here are three of the best, oh my lord, moments uh, from my life. Uh, this is one where the twins crashed a live stream and wanted to watch Star Wars with me. Uh, we watched Clone Wars. We watched Bad Batch. We've watched every Star Wars movie. Um, then there's he, me trying to get the people with the leaf blowers to please stop with the leaf blowers. Oh my God, they're so loud in California. I never heard a leaf blower before I moved uh, from New York to California. And now it's just like every day. I, I didn't know there were so many leaves and so few rakes. Okay. And then uh, the moment when I uh, invested live $25,000 in a Nodi Gang member and founder, university participant, Chris niblet live on air roll the tape um if you didn't know this uh, hold on guys hey guys I'm, I'm on the phone I'm, I'm on a call right now okay can you give me 10 15 minutes uh, okay okay I'm gonna make it 10 15. 15 minutes use your ipad and play two games 
games? Two games. Okay. About 20 minutes. Okay. Use your time timer. Okay. Thanks. Well, whatever. You know, you, you can use the time timer or just 20 minutes, okay? Uh, I'll do it on my iPad. Okay, on your iPad. That sounds okay. good. Okay, well, what was 20? Like 20 minutes is like watching one episode of Star Wars. Long episode? Like a long episode, oh. yeah. You can watch an episode of The Bad Batch if you want. <laughs> you can watch the last episode, then I'll watch the new one with you later, okay? Yes. Okay. Um, Daddy? Yes. Uh, I have to go right now because I'm going to call. Can I, should I, you know, can I uh, turn things on my iPad and yes. go on the gas? 20 minutes. Two, two, zero. Two, zero. Two, zero. Okay, two, good luck. Okay, bye. <laughs> Do you have a window open? By any chance? I do. You hear my? Uh, you hear the gardeners next door? Yeah, I do. Yeah. God damn it! They're yeah. banning those things soon. Hold on. Hey I did. Guys. Yeah, I do that now as soon as I get on. Guys, guys. He's such a clown. Oh. Hey guys. <laughs> we're we're live. <laughs> guys. It's ridiculous. Hey guys, no noise over here, okay? I'm on the phone. I'm on the phone. Uh, no noise right now on this side. On the over phone there, too. Okay. Thank you. Sixty-four thank you. people. Have you raised any money for this vision or it's just no. you and founders? Have you no, incorporated? Yeah. Um, so I have an LLC that I've used for other things, but I've not really used it for this. So okay, good. the short answer is right. no. Yeah. Got it. Uh, what would $25,000 do for you guys now? <laughs> if you had 25, uh, right? Yeah, that would be incredible. Um, we would love to be able to grow to, you know, have the time and the resources to go get more restaurants, get more businesses on okay. board, and then especially on, on the consumer side also. Yeah, that would be a game changer. Okay, so yeah. uh, here's the deal. I told everybody during the 12-week course that I'd pick my favorite startup and give them 25K. Uh, but, I, so I'm gonna keep that in for the last week, but how about I give you 25K right now for 1% of the company? So 25K for $2.5 million valuation, we send you a convertible note. You incorporate in Delaware, you know, properly, and then we just ship you 25k. Is that something you might be interested in? Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and yank your hand off on that. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks, there you have it. I just put 25k into this company. <laughs> I just such a heartwarming moment with my kids. Oh, so cute. Um, and uh, if you haven't watched the Clone Wars, if you're Gen X and you're into Star Wars, to watch the Clone Wars with your kids and have that become their favorite is a really surreal experience because then they're like, well, Anakin Skywalker becomes Darth Vader, but you don't see Darth Vader in the Clone Wars, but for, you know, the last episode, spoiler alert, but uh, <laughs> spoiler alert, at the end of the Clone Wars, he beca Anna Skywalker becomes Darth Vader. So that's really what Clone Wars is about. And it's just such a great, great moment. But, you know, let's, let's, let's stay focused here, folks. Um, my God. And just even trying to get the gardeners to stop with those leaf blowers. Uh, they are banning them in California, which is going to be great because, you know, they just use like some weird mixture of like m oil and uh gasoline they pollute like there are a hundred cars or some crazy statistic i read because they're like one of these two-stroke engines where you pour the oil and the gasoline there's no filters on them so it's terrible for the person you're replacing them with electric ones which would be great for everybody um and of course putting 25k in on the spot is a baller move and super interesting let's see who the winner was let me get this envelope here and wait for the the drum roll all right i'm getting this open ah, there it is oh wait not my daughters, not the gardeners, and that means it must be investing $25,000 in Chris's company on air. Of course, I should have seen that coming. What a magical uh, live moment uh, for everybody involved. And he's actually in our accelerator, so the 25K bet became a 100K bet. Our ownership went from 1% to 6%, and that's great for everybody involved. Okay, award number seven, the most awkward moment. If you can believe it, we had some awkward moments happen. Uh, and uh, this one was really awkward. I had tried the better bagel, the better brands keto bagel, and I, I I gave it a score. Like I thought maybe she was halfway there, and she was not too excited about me rating her bagel on a scale of one to ten. But I thought this was an important thing to do. I thought I was helping her. She may have felt differently about that. And then SourceGraph CEO Quinn Slack refused to answer my question about SaaS pricing after four tries. And uh, I usually don't do the four try thing. I'm usually a little bit more, you know, I I'm a two try, maybe three try kind of guy with like the questions and then I'll let it go. But I'm certainly not like 
you know, Chuck Todd just says like, okay, on to the next topic or, okay, you didn't answer my question, but they just goes to the next topic because he assumes he's not going to get it out of the person. I decided I'd knock on the door four times to see what happens. Uh, okay, let's play the uh, highlights. Where do you feel you are on that journey of like sort of competing against, you know, the, the most legit Brooklyn bagel, New York bagel? Oh gosh, you gave us 50%? I think 50%. Yeah, I think you're halfway there. It's the mouthfeel is a little chewy, um, but in a different way than a bagel flavors a little bit off. But when I toasted it, I'll give you this. When I toasted it with butter, I think it got to like maybe 60% of okay. like what of my joy in eating a bagel, which by the way, <laughs> that to me was phenomenal. My expectation was because I've had some funky stuff and, you know, I've had all the mock meats and, you know, if you put up the steak that I get, if I'm getting, you know, Kobe beef or a Wagyu or a, you know, great ribeye, I would say like the burgers and the steak are probably 25% as satisfying. So I felt like 50, 60% was pretty great uh, for yeah. a first iteration. So 300 bucks a year for the software, 25 bucks a seat. I'm just seeing a Google result is ballpark. Is that about right? Uh, it depends on what features you're using. On average? It's, you know, less than 1% of what you're going to pay a developer in a year. It's so well, yeah, easy. Can I ask you a question about this? Why are you so secret about the pricing? Well, I'll tell you why. And we are a very transparent company. So, you know, you can look in our handbook, you can see, you can look in our yeah. code. I'm just talking specifically about pricing. It's really easy to get started with source graph. You can What does that you know, have to do the with base? the pricing though? <laughs> this well, doesn't answer my question about pricing. I'm asking you very specifically. Why do companies who are SaaS not just disclose the pricing? Because the price that it takes to get started is often right. a lot lower than the price once it's rolled out to a whole company and the CTO and CIO and so many internal business processes are kind of dependent on it. And if you show the price to get started, then those people are going to be anchored. And if you show the price that is once it's uh, delivering tremendous enterprise value, then the devs are going to say that's way more than you know, I am comfortable with this is interesting. See, that's the reason why I asked you the question three times two or three times is because I knew there was an answer. All right. So that was a little, both of those are incredibly awkward moments. I have to admit the poor better brand CEO, I, you know, I don't watch my own show. Obviously I experience it when I do it, but looking in, you know, Amy's eyes when I gave her a five of 10, I felt terrible. Now she looks crestfallen. I think it's a journey. Like, you know, did anybody eat the first impossible burger and say, you know, 10 of 10, nine of 10, everybody was like two of 10. This thing's terrible. It tastes like sawdust. You know, it's barely better than a veggie burger. Uh, and then slowly, I think, you know, people who would ever have an impossible burger or beyond meat, I think they put those at like a six or a seven if you're a meat lover. And if you're a vegetarian, maybe it's an eight or nine because you got nothing else to compare it to. You're not only allowed to eat a burger. Uh, and I was like, yeah, if you toast it, I give you one more point, which I think is that was also kind of like an insult. Um, so <laughs> that was certainly awkward. But I, you know, at least, you know, I'm honest. And then I, you know, the Sourcegraph CEO, that also was very awkward, I think, for all of us. And I'm actually shocked that I kind of went there, but I, I did have a personal frustration with why they don't share the prices. So here we go. The winner of the 2021 most awkward moment, and there were many on this week in startups is, oh God, this, Jesus, why do they put these, this one's in two envelopes. Why would you double envelope it, producers? Ah, there we go. Fine. Oh. Wow, this is a shocker to me. I thought for sure the bagel moment was more awkward, but the winner is Quinn Slack. Congratulations, submitted by producer Nick, because his skin, according to Nick, was crawling on the Zoom call when I kept banging him on this as if I was interviewing somebody about weapons of mass destructions or something incredibly important in the world. I can, I can chime in on this because okay. I was on both calls and I promise you the Quinn Slack one was more awkward. That video is as about as short as I could cut that. That was like a four minute segment where you were just like, oh, really? But why aren't you answering my question? And he was like, well, you don't really understand the ecosystem. He's, and you're like, I'm not asking about the ecosystem. <laughs> why aren't you answering the question? And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh my sorry, God. Sorry, Quinn. But I did think it was an instructive moment because he actually wound up answering the question. And the yes. answer was very simple. Sticker shock, right? Super easy. Okay, Super nobody, easy. Who cares? Yes. No if you deal. have 10,000 developers and this is $1,000 per developer, 1% of the cost of 1,500 per developer, like, okay, you're going to pay for your 1,000 developers, 1. 1.5 million. You'd be like, I'll build it myself. I'll hire five developers and I'll save money on my own internal weapon. And that is, of course, true. Like, if you had a, if you're using Slack for $15 a month, 
okay, it's a hundred, what is that per year? 180 bucks a year, thousand people, 180,000 a year. You're like, eh, maybe we should have our own server. Or maybe if you had 10,000 people, it's 1.8 million. When you start getting to eight figures, I'm sorry, when you get to seven figures, it does become hard for SaaS companies to justify the cost uh, in a yeah. big enterprise. And it's kind of silly, but um, they do hide the pricing and they make a call and all this kind of stuff as if people and are not going to do the back of, of the envelope math. You got him out of um, PR I mode. broke the media yeah. training, yes. You broke it. So I thought it was I a good moment. It. He'll never come back on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm about not that. investing his next cup. I don't know, Quinn. If I if it, if that was uh, too much, I apologize. I just was excited to hear your answer. Let me leave it at that. Good sleep is the ultimate game changer. We all know that. And according to Eight Sleep, over 30% of Americans struggle with sleep, and temperature is one of the main reasons. I know this because. My wife and I, listen, we run at two different temperatures. I like it nice and cool, and she likes it toasty warm. And then we get into the thermostat wars. The thermostat wars are over. You take out the app, and then I can set on my side, I want to be plus four. And then the algorithm gets to work, it studies my sleep, and it knows what temperature I should be. And I don't know how the algorithm works, but I sleep better and I wake up more rested. And now Eight Sleep is offering a Pod Pro cover. If you already have a mattress, it's super easy. You just buy the cover and you can still experience all the magic of 8sleep. That's one of the great innovations. The Pod Pro cover is the most advanced solution in the market for thermoregulation. It pairs dynamic cooling and heating, and then that biometric tracking. So you can look at the app, it tells you your sleep stages, biometrics, the bedroom temperature, and it reacts intelligently. It creates that optimal sleep environment. 8sleep users fall asleep up to 32% faster. It also reduces your sleep interruptions, according to our friends at 8sleep by 40 percent you can overall get more restful sleep when i sleep on a bed that doesn't have eight sleep i don't sleep as well period end of story so go to eight sleep.com slash twist to check out the pod pro cover and get a special holiday offer you're gonna love it just trust me i love it so much i put a, I put a little placed a little bet I, I wet my beak i invested a little bit in eight sleep a lot of my friends are investors in eight sleep as well great job eight sleep okay funniest moments now we can get the other side this is, you know, the fans love when I, I do an impersonation. So the first one is my Melania Trump NFT uh, impersonation. Uh, the second is uh, the greatest CNBC hit. Oh my, the greatest CNBC hit of all time. You know what my favorite is. Um, and three is Howard Lindzen absolutely busting my chops relentlessly. Uh, I believe he called me a Nazi <laughs> or had a Nazi haircut or something. He's absolutely savage to me on Twitter. Uh, let's just roll the highlights because there are so many funny moments we're laughing on the show. The NFT is watercolor art that quote embodies Mrs. Trump's cobalt blue eyes, providing the collector with an amulet, an amulet to inspire. It also includes an audio recording of Melania uh, Trump. And here it is a message of hope from Melania Trump. My vision is look forward with inspiration, strength, and courage. My vision is look forward and look be inspired. My vision and courage is to my vision is divorce Donald forward with inspiration and get Marla goes in settlement. Courage. It's just look so brutal. Uh, so you can buy this. I think she's going to do it every day. Uh, I think it's pretty awesome. <laughs> I got to admit, like I don't want to be one of ten thousand apes, but kind of do want to own one of these. And I think she should cameo it, so it should be like. This is special inspiration to this week in Startups team. Be your best. Your boss is insufferable, but be best. This is legitimate art. Yeah, so, well, Upstart's up about 25% just in four days since we since we bought it. We bought it on uh, about four days ago. Uh, so that's actually made a, a nice little move in the uh, short term, probably a little extended right now, but longer term, uh, that, that's a that's a, a good looking uh, name. Uh, very powerful, and very strong earnings. These stocks are- What do they do? Really I don't well. even know them. What do they do? Uh, excuse me? What does Upstart do? Uh, well, I'm-, I'm, I'm I'm sorry. What kind of company is it? Yeah, I'm not, you're, you're breaking up. Oh, uh, well, I guess we, we've got an audio problem there, Mark. I'm sorry. What you saw there was, you know, he's having a panic attack. Obviously, he, he's recommending a stock on national television 
without even knowing what they do. I mean, this is the height of insanity. You literally could just visit their website and know what they do. Do you do any prep for coming on CNBC? As someone who doesn't even love like you that much, don't do that. <laughs> don't even like do it's that. Neutral. <laughs> Wait, are we don't even do that. Fr- we it's like each other. Friendly. We remind each other too much of each other, and that's why we no. fight. What is it like siblings? No, I just don't like your haircut. I just, really, I felt that haircut was a little Third Reich. I've always felt it was a little. Ah, third Reich. I got it. So you know, it's interesting you bring that. As up. As a Jew, I always yes. worried that that haircut had. It's some- interesting you bring up the Nazis. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> say it. you said it. <laughs> Oh my God. It is so brutal. That was so brutal. All of them are so brutal. Um, and Mark uh, Minervini, his people emailed me actually. And so I'll take them at their word that there were in fact audio issues. It's obvious that you do zero research and know little about the people you smear on your show. I didn't smear. The host of CNBC and the producer already acknowledged that there was an audio issue during Mark's October 15th and appearance, an issue that started before the thing as a result cnbc took down the replay of the interview from the youtube channel maybe you should be interviewed maybe you should have interviewed somebody at cnbc first or at least given mark an opportunity to respond before you try to tarnish a stellar reputation it certainly was bad timing appeared that mark drew a blank but the fact is it simply had the audio break up and let the host know he wasn't expecting the interview to end da, 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 da. so uh anyway um i don't believe them if i'm being totally honest that sounds like but i'll take them at their word Sure. Why not? We'll take them at their word. That's true. That's what we'll do. All right. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> Sorry, Mark. I don't believe you're PR people. I mean, <laughs> it's just obvious. Just own it. Be like, one of my people bought it. I should have known that was a mistake. But you know, everybody's a tough guy, wants to be on CNBC. They want to throw stuff out there. You got to be able to bring it. You should know something. You have to have skin in the game. If you're just buying stocks because they're momentum stocks, say it. Say, I bought it because it had momentum on Wall Street bets. And I thought, let me see if I can just get 10% out of this. So I'm just going to buy it on a momentum play. I mean, that's a total. There are people who are technical traders who just look for certain chart things. That's a way of trading. There are people who trade just based on flash trading or whatever they call it. You know, there, there's all kinds of trading concepts out there. You don't have to know. Anyway, it's a hard one for me. For me, the funniest moment is the greatest NBC uh, hit of all time. But let's see who my producers and the audience picked. Okay. All right. This uh, this envelope's opening up pretty easily. There you go. Super easy. That's the way you pack an envelope. Okay. And people seem to love my Melania Trump NFT impersonation. Okay, fine. I like my Bernie Sanders. But uh, okay, if you like. Bernie, you're a terrible person, Bernie. You want to take all the taxes from Donald. He's not actually that rich, and you want to tax him like he's a billionaire. He's only worth 200 million. He's 800 in debt. All right, enough. Here we go. Best reoccurring guest of the year as we wrap up here. Best reoccurring guest of the year. Ben and David from Acquired. Five appearances. Zach Coleus on Ask an Angel. Eight appearances. Neck and neck here. And let's play a quick clip. What is the biggest missed investment opportunity you're willing to admit? And why did you pass on them? The anti-portfolio classic question. I always talk about Twitter uh, and Zynga. What are yours? The one I talk about is Uber. So like I met Uber when it was an idea and Travis and I had this huge debate about whether or not he would be able to make it work. And I was like, look, the taxi lobby is going to crush you. There's not a chance. Like you're you're fighting with laws and corrupt bureaucrats here. You're going to get killed. And he's like, I'm a fighter. I'm going to win this. And it actually taught you me half right. You identified the key. You literally identified the key a risk factor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, the thing for me that, that I, taught me is that like the best, most exciting startups are the ones that have really clear normative violations. And the normative violation was, can you succeed in violation of the rules that these dumb cities have put in place and the corruption that they have? And he demonstrated that it's possible. And so now when I look at other deals that have like normative violations like that, I think, okay, maybe this there's this thing that obviously is going to cause them to die. But what happens on the other side? And there it was super clear. Like you push a button and you get a car. Oh my God, that's like the most valuable thing ever. And so the other side of that normative valuation was just unlimited value creation. Warren's whole thing that you hear him say over and over and over again all the time, never bet against America. You know, America is future. Okay? And he has been a master at taking the long view on that. Whatever is going to happen in any given year, 
any given cycle, just like we saw in crypto here, you know, like it's all noise in the long run. And, and I you lo- believe that? I be- For believe our lifetime. that view. I'm not sure it's necessarily America is the domain that it applies to anymore. Uh, it may, it may not. I don't have a view one way or the other. In that the market is bigger than America, but American exceptionalism will continue. Do well, you believe I think it, it will continue to through our lifetime? Now. I think it yeah, applies yeah, this to the is, internet. Obviously, this is the Rosenthal doctrine: yeah, is the, uh, not not never bet bet against America, but never bet against the internet. Exactly. Ah, oh, I like that. I like that. I would agree with both of those statements. All right, uh, and the winner is. Oh, here we go. Okay. Acquired FM, amazing job! I can see the acquired right as I ripped open the envelope. I have to say, Zach did an equally good job, but the audience went with Acquired this year. You know, just being nominated is such a blessing, Uh, but great job to the Acquired FM uh, team, great podcast, and great collaborators with This Week in Startups. Okay, here we go. It's the big one. Guest of the year. The guest and episode of the year. The nominees are Toby Lutke from Shopify, JB Schraubel, former co-founder of Tesla, now doing his own uh, new battery recycling company, Redwood Materials. Ah, yes, and CoffeeZilla. In the heat of the pandemic, I had destroyed all of the coaching and course scammers. Toby from Shopify is back. Number one priority is let's go build the best product we can possibly build. And then, you know, priority number two is let's, be, let's make some revenue so that we can do more of priority number one. And then actually now priority number three is never mix one and two, right? And so um, I, <laughs> I think that's, that's if, so if you, brilliant. Yeah. If you really like look at um, like, because that seems to be the commonality, right? It's like, there's a reason why this is done, like um, uh, why the company is built and what it's standing for. Like, but you don't drive a car just to burn fuel you burn right yeah you're fuel not in to it for get the somewhere. combustion right? like, engine yes, we're not opening the hood not. and being like wow look at yeah. how it's burning gas it's yeah, like yeah, where yeah. did it take us welcome to the program jb hey great to be here thanks for having me so many different oems you know countries you know uh factories customers are leaping into evs you know making these huge announcements you know saying they'll be fully electric in their fleet you know this decade or next they haven't i think really done the math fully on <laughs> you know what that entails in the supply chain and tracing it all the way back, uh, literally all the way back to the mines. You know, it has the feeling to me of kind of a giant overbooked flight. You know, everybody's saying they want to go there at the same time. Meanwhile, you know, we, we have to sort of build the planes to get there. We have to, you know, figure out how to, you know, sequence everyone. You know, it can all get sorted out over time. But, you know, obviously we're trying to do this fast as a society and as a species. Um, I do think, you know, we're going to have a really painful time of it. And, you know, it won't be just a simple battery shortage. I think it's going to kind of ripple through different parts of the supply chain. You know, it mm. may at one point be nickel shortages. Maybe it'll be cathode shortage. Maybe another day it'll be separator shortage. I am here with Steven from the most amazing YouTube channel that I love to watch. It's called CoffeeZilla. Can we okay. form a super team, okay. the Justice League, and we go after the Legion of Doom scammers and we find the victims? Have you ever ever gotten one of them on camera to 100%. interview? Because I'm getting 100%. them DMing me. It's, it's one of my most viral videos is a Dan Locke video of this teacher who quit his job sunk 26k into this into Dan Lok's course and it's a, it describes a cycle of the upsell cuz first it's high ticket closer then it's that's not enough i'm not making any money i thought i was making money so i'm going to join closers in black then okay wait wait closers in black isn't making any money maybe i should j- go join high ticket millionaire or whatever he's got like a million upsells right cuz it's all about getting people keep buying in buying in you need that back end. so it describes the process of this victim and i call him a victim because he literally was out 26k he thought he was bad off before as a teacher then he was without a job out of 26k so you do this and these are really powerful interviews all right there you have it folks three amazing interviews but for the guest at episode of the year there can only be one winner let's open the envelope the winner is ah, ah i see a t it's toby toby from shopify this is one for the ages although i have to say the coffee zillow episode was also great jb was killer coffee zillow episode i look so fat in my god i was 198 or 199 pounds in that but the toby episode episode number 1184 of this week in startups his second appearance i think or third appearance on the show 
what a great, great, great guest. Yeah. That's required listening or watching for anybody in the internet space. So let's go uh, with our newest category, new for this year because we're doing so many live streams, the Nodi member of the year. The candidates are Walton Dornish, who sends me a lot of emails with a lot of great ideas, Bob G, the OG, Toby Zhang, Surge Dog, ENIAC78, Brandon Francis, Lita, and Joe Chad Hari. These are all members of the Nodi gang. When I go live, they're in there every time within seconds and minutes. Sometimes we even think that they have a bot. And the winner is for Nodi gang member of the year. Drum roll, please. Oh, here we go. All right, let me open the envelope. Oh, wait. What do I see? I see an E. I see an E. I see another E. I see a G. Oh my God, it's Bob G. Oh G, Bob G wins Nodi Gang member of the year. What a great job from Bob G, the OG, because he gave us so many great questions. Uh, all right, next up, the producers and I will talk about in the after party, we're gonna go to the cocktail lounge and we'll have the after party where we will discuss what happened tonight. We're all gonna get out of these tuxedos, put on some casual clothes and go over to the party hosted uh, by just uh, a cavalcade of celebrities. And here we are, we're at the after party, people milling about. All right, producers, uh, Nick, what was your favorite moment from the show in the past year? So um, my favorite moment was, it was episode 1242. The new story on that episode uh, was the next door SPAC um, ah, breakdown. Yeah. And this was the first thing that I, I did that I was like, oh, all right, this is cool. I found in like, you know, a byline of a byline of a appendix that ne next doors, um, the way that they count their daily and monthly active mm. users is if someone opens an email. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that's kind of weird. A little aggressive. Uh, we, yeah. And then, so you talked about it. Then the next day, Alex Wilhelm from TechCrunch also found the same thing. He talked about it. And then it kind of became like a story that like, hey, why is oh, that interesting? Ne uh, so next that, was, door? that was a great moment for you as a yeah. producer to, to, to add something to the mix. Yes, put something this, is, in the notes. this was a selfish choice. Fantastic. Yeah, no, I like it. Justin, did you have a favorite uh, moment from the show this past year? Yeah, I really liked Everett Randall, episode 1207. Okay, uh, wow. We were discussing his article on Tiger Global and mm. him probably only being a few years older than me. It kind of- uh, Oh, inspiring. The, 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 yeah, inspiring. The, the depth that he understood the topic and how he kind of pierced the, the VC guys. Randall Zeitgeist. from Founders Fund, yeah. Great discussion, too. Great discussion. Rachel, uh, you've been with us uh, only for half the year, I think, but what was uh, your best moment? And congratulations on the studio. Looking good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it got really dark while we were recording. It promised it yeah. was a lot lighter about an hour ago. So okay. my favorite episode from this year was actually from before I came here. It oh, was okay. Angel uh, Season 5, Episode 8 with Gary Tan on lessons from startup ah. failures. I just Great. thought he was really well articulated, and I'm a huge Gary mm. Tan fan, so... That was just really awesome to see. All right. Now, favorite thing about working on the podcast. Uh, it's a great job. Everybody wants to come work here on the podcast and sacrifice their entire life to make me look good. Everybody knows that. <laughs> so uh, what was your favorite moment in all seriousness uh, about working here, Nick? So I really liked how this year, a little bit towards the end of last year, we, we started to go on this route. But originally, for people that don't know, for people that don't know, or just want someone that wants background, like producing here was just doing show notes for guests. We never did the news, right? Mm. And we never did dug into S1s. We never dug into SPAC investor presentations, nothing like that. And at the end we of last year- We would do a news year, round table and the news round table would kind of serve that function. We'd have two journalists on to talk about their stories. Right, but I guess I'm saying we, even in those cases, the store, we'd more so talk about what they wanted to talk about instead of yes. like, hey, this is something interesting. Here's where you should be looking. Right. Got it. And we started doing that. So I love that. And I really like, and we, when we had old news roundtables, like we would never be going through and like, Hey, here's our last three months of revenue. Here's their price to sales yes. ratio. Uh, here's how much money they have in the bank. Here's how much runway they have. If they're burning this much last quarter and like doing all these crazy Excellent. calculations, which I love doing. I think it's so much fun. Um, and now, uh, I actually, you too, you pushed us to 
Um, <laughs> even when there's like a fraud, like I remember for App Annie um, or alleged fraud, you were like, hey, explain this simpler. I, I don't, I, I need to know what they do in one sim- one sentence. It's super simple. So now, so anytime we cover a fraud or we go through an S1 or, or a SPAC presentation, we have to explain the business almost like we work there mm. in the most simple, easy, basic way. And so we, like, I feel like I understand all these businesses now, like 10 years ahead of where I should be because of how far you push us on these oh, things. Right. So it's hear. great. Awesome. Uh, Justin, did you have one uh, favorite thing about working here the past year? This is your chance to suck up to yeah. the boss. <laughs> I mean, obviously, my weight loss has been inspiring, but I, I'm, 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 I want my you to pick something after that. Or from the last year was learning how to communicate uh, effectively uh, ah, to you, who good. has less patience than other people I've worked with, which is good because uh, <laughs> that, that definitely <laughs> wow. less patience is a virtue, I think, in media wow. business. A and, bold uh, choice. You, you so dealing me with me as a boss and learning how to communicate efficiently. When I say, please just answer the question, please just give me the answer to the question. Don't make excuses. Just, I didn't do it. I f***ed up. I screwed up. Whatever it is, just own it. Let's move forward because we don't have time. It's a daily show. We're producing every day. Great job. It's been great to work with you, Justin. Um, You got a month severance and uh, two months of Cobra if you elect (laughs) it. Better CEO. (laughs) Uh, And Rachel. Uh, Shout out to CEO. My favorite part was probably learning how to become a single threaded leader. I don't think I Mm. have ever had this much um, leadership opportunity before in a role, considering it's basically like my first role out of college. So I think that's really cool getting to be able to do research for OK Boomer and of course everything with meetups. It's been it's been really cool. Absolutely. We like to put people in charge of stuff. We take people who are starting their careers, you know, just in the first couple of years or their first job. We throw them right in the deep end of the pool and. And we give them a couple of cinder blocks and we <laughs> watch them sink. Uh, then we tell them they can let go of the cinder blocks and come back and get some air. All right, Charles, what about you? Uh, favorite part about uh, working here? You were off for a little bit during the pandemic, but you're back and you're in the zone. Uh, any, any great memories from the year? It's, you know what? It's difficult to give any single moment. Ah. Working here is challenging and wonderful. Um, I think just generally speaking, I would say that... Um, the way that you push us, the way that you challenge us every single day, you expect A1 every single day. And mm. then when we deliver A1, you're like, why have you not got A1 star plus, plus, plus? I don't get it. <laughs> you know, use your brains. Get it going. What's and that's next? You're, you're like, <laughs> Let's oh, go. okay, I, I have to just push it. Uh, you know, we, uh, we, we really try to make the show uh, really great for the audience. We try to make it so it's worth your time. And I couldn't do it without this incredible team. And then, of course, Matt and Jamie helping sell the ads. And then, of course, on the investment side, everybody involved, you know, Ashley, Jackie, Heidi, Amber, Presh, Maureen, uh, Karen, uh, and Kelly joining us recently. And uh, we'll welcome Molly in the new year to be part of the team. I think I got everybody, yeah? Oh, Andreas is new, yes. Uh, I, I, he's only been here like two or three months. I don't remember anybody's name until month four. That's just part of the gig. I just, I'm like... Show me something first, then I'll remember your name. I'm joking. And basically, uh, to, to work at launch, you you first have to prove your worth, and then Jason's like, "Okay, you work here." Okay, it's it's almost like you get a paycheck, but you don't actually really get any acknowledgement until you actually put a number on the board. And then Jason's like, "Oh, okay, you you I, oh, I you see. did something. You Congratulations!" Yeah, yeah, well, I yeah. mean, it's a it's a group of uh, high performance people, and they hold each other accountable, and the product speaks for itself. Whether it's on the investment side or the podcast we do. You know, hopefully, you know, just trying to be one or two percent better every week means, you know, every year the product is twice as good. And we really feel like we, um, I really feel like the team did a great job this year on this week in startups. Products obviously getting better, the meetups, the guests, the formats of the show, the quality, the quantity of the show, launching all in as a a side project. (laughs) I mean, just incredible. Great job, everybody. And we will look forward to seeing you in the new year. Bye bye.